from John's Grill. We are so excited to have you guys here, and we are so excited, me and Courtney, to be joined by some of TCU baseball's best. We have Anthony Silva, he's a shortstop, and Luis Rodriguez, a pitcher. We're gonna go ahead and get right into all the personal details. First, why TCU guys? Like, what drew you about TCU? Um, well, I wasn't committed here first. Um, it was, uh, I had a couple buddies that were coming here, Gabriel and uh, Carson, and they actually influenced me to come here. Um, decommitted from USD and decided to come to TCU, and I always loved it, uh, toured it with them, uh -huh. and I just fell in love with TCU. Now, you're from California, so that, was that kind of an easy decision, that first commitment, or was it hard to, like, leave? Um, it was it was hard. Yeah. Um, I had my family around, so that, that's what made it hard as well. Um, but I do know that I came to a better a program, a better school with uh, people who would support me and stuff like that. So that's the, that's the reason why I kind of came this way yeah. and I, I didn't really uh, just uh, I mean, make a like, second guess. Yeah. It's half California. Here. Yeah, You're pretty much. Here. Yeah, exactly right. Speaking of you from California, has it been any different like playing in Texas, weather wise, anything like that? What's the difference there? Most definitely the heat. Okay. I'm not used to the heat. I'm from California. You know, it's 70 degrees oh, weather. Oh, I am too. I know what okay, you're talking 100%. about. 100%. So, so the weather was most definitely yeah. a big factor for me. Uh, pitching in uh, humid and hot. Yeah. I wasn't used to it. It was just me having to adapt and just yeah. overcome that. So. Yeah. Is your family still able to come watch you? They come. Uh, they came once, actually, for uh -huh. my birthday. But they, they, it's, it's hard for them just because of work and stuff Far. like that. But uh, it, they, make, they make it work. They watch Baseball's from a tough yeah, schedule, yeah, 100%. too. We're always traveling, we're always doing stuff, so it's just hard for them to come out often, but uh, they do it. They, they come out and support sometimes when they can, and yeah. they watch it through ESPN, so. That's exciting. Yes. Great. Yes. Anthony, you're not getting off the hook. Let's uh -oh. go ahead, let's hear your answer. Uh, well, my uncle played here, actually, in 1996 to 99, so he was a catcher here, and I'd always been a TCU fan, and when they offered me, it was really a no-brainer. I love the coaches, love the culture, love the city. It was far enough from home where my parents won't, won't come every weekend. <laughs> Hopefully uh -huh. they don't listen to this. But uh, they can, if I, and I could go home if yeah, I really exactly. need to. So and I think the weather. It, yeah, the weather, I'm used so to it. So You're, yeah. you're from uh, San Antonio, right? Yes. Okay, so you, did you want to be close to home? Was that something you expected to be doing yeah. in college? or? I mean, I kind of wanted to go somewhere in California, but I, I really like TCU. So, okay, so y'all switched. Kinda, switch lives right yeah. now. Yeah. Switch. <laughs> I guess so, but no, I love TCU, and I'm glad I made this decision. Good. Yeah. It's been good. Okay. What about the academics here? What kind of drew you about TCU academically? You know, you're student yeah. athlete, student first. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, I knew I'm not really like good in a big classroom. So I knew if, if I was like in a lecture hall for every yeah. single class, it would be pretty hard for me to understand the material. But like, kind of like high school, these classes are like 30, 35 kids, like usually. Max. And yeah, and it's just really easy for me to learn. And then obviously all the academic, um, opportunities too like we have tutors writing specialists all that yeah. so uh, that really helps too. definitely a big help what's your major I am undecided right now okay so no that's fine it happens. if anyone has any suggestions I'd you've, love to hear you've got lots of time though don't <laughs> yeah. worry you're good we can take a poll later <laughs> yeah, sure. Lewis what about you I'm a criminal justice major okay yeah. so what drew you about the academics here was it that program um no I initially came in as a kinese major i just okay. i couldn't do it, it was got a little, just, it was a little, little hard very, that's very, a lot of work very, very hectic um and i just decided to change my major criminal justice major so that's why i, I kind of changed and uh, i kind of like it um it, it's a great program and i enjoy uh doing what i do that's, criminal justice. that's a fun topic to study like there's so much depth to it you can learn so much about it what do you guys do when you guys travel for school stuff academically um uh, well our, we reach out to our professors to, well, in the beginning of the semester, we give them our schedule mm -hmm. and we let them know like when we're going to be gone and stuff. So um, we, as long as we communicate with our professors, like everything should be fine because everything's pretty much online. Do so. you think they're pretty lenient with that? Yes, I would say they're, I mean, not lenient. They're not going to give us like an extra week to do yeah. an assignment because we went out of town. But just uh, enough time. I, yeah, just enough time, maybe a couple of days, um, but they understand for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, I agree with that. what Anthony said. Uh, they're pretty lenient um, for the most part. You just let them know that you're going to be out of town that weekend, and you get your homework done, and just submit the assignment, and that's about it. Like, you, it's not nothing crazy. You just get your stuff done, and you'll be fine. That's what makes TCU so much better than other schools because they do have that smaller class size, so you feel like way connected to your professors on like a different level with like 20, 30 students in a classroom versus like Anthony was talking about, like a 
100 lecture class. Yeah. No, 100%. I, I feel like when you have 100 uh, people, 100 uh, classmates, you don't really get to know your professor. And yeah. when you have that 30, 30 classmates, you get to know your professor, you get to know them on a personal level. And it helps you out a little bit more because it, like you could go talk to them like, yeah, and help on this, and then they help you out. So yeah. th that's the positive of coming to TCU and having it's, a smaller uh, Especially being a student yeah. athlete. I think that helps you out a lot. So that's a great opportunity for you guys to definitely have to put that academics first definitely that's yeah, all the tc mindset for student athletes oh yeah and then kind of going back to it we talked about it a little bit before you said that you were originally committed to usd that's correct so what, did you have any other offers that were coming out of there not to get too personal i did um but i i don't know it wasn't entertaining it wasn't entertaining to me i was just uh, i don't know what happened but to usd happens. i just decided to go there all right committed there but uh, i didn't end up there so so it really was just through your friends that were going here? Yeah, 100%. It was Carson Bowen and uh, Gabe Miranda that influenced me to come <laughs> here. Uh, they were really stoked. I was asking them, uh, long story short, uh, we were in Utah in a, yeah. in a high school tournament, or, um, and I decided to ask them, I was like, hey, man, like, is there any chance I could go with you guys like, uh -huh. to TCU? Like, I love the environment you guys create for me. I love the, everything that you guys provide for me. You guys are brothers to me. Yeah. So that, that's what kind of like influenced me to, again to, to come to TCU. That the brotherhood and the love that I have for those guys is insane. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Yeah. And you said that you were automatically TCU no-brainer. But was there other stuff on the table? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I only had one Come on other. Now, stupid <laughs> question. I only had one one other offer. Um, it was Texas. Uh -huh. and oh, good choice. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. we Horns hate down. Texas, no, but, I yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, TCU is a no-brainer. Um, the culture here compared to over there, it's way better, and I mean, you saw, we saw that last year, so. And you talked about the academics. It's a lot smaller here. Right, exactly. Um, All yeah, around. yeah better uh, school. Academics first, for sure. But, and purple yeah. just looks better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of also doing a 180 as well over here. What? Have you guys always played the positions you're playing now? I know you're shortstop and you're a pitcher. Has that, like, I mean, from kindergarten, peewee, t-ball, football, has that, like, been the move for you guys? Oh. Yeah, for me, I've, I've always been an infielder. Uh -huh. um, just wherever, first base, second base, third base. But shortstop's the one I love the most, and I practiced it the most growing up. So I'm, I'm fortunate enough to play at this great program at shortstop. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you just play shortstop last year? You didn't play yes. any other center infielder right. positions? No. Okay. I, I mean, in practice, I would take reps at other places, but uh, in the games, yes, just shortstop. Was mm -hmm. that kind of the understanding when you came to TCU that you were coming here to be a shortstop? Well, yes, that was definitely my goal, and I, I worked my tail off yeah. to, to be that, and uh, I think I, I worked hard enough, and I just got to continue to work hard to keep, stay at that position. I mean, Sports Center top 10, I <laughs> think you worked hard enough. <laughs> Lewis, what about you? I've always been a pitcher. Um, I started playing baseball when I was three, yeah. so uh, I just love pitching. My parents always gave me lessons and take, took me to lessons. So, um, uh, at 12 years old, I made the USA team, so that's I also like kind of that really promoted me to be, want to become pitcher and focus my all my energy into pitching. Yeah, um, I think that's where I kind of uh, strive to yeah. be at. So, yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about you starting. Who got you into baseball? I mean, you're only three years old. There's got to be somebody. <laughs> Actually, watching my cousin play when I was three years old, I went to one of my cousin's like yeah. little league uh, games, and I was just, I just felt he was catching at the time. Yeah. Fell in love with the sport, and I, that's what kind of drew me to baseball. It was just like I want to be like him, and I want to continue building on the Rodriguez legacy. And yeah. that, I think I did that. So. Was he your mentor then, growing up? Yeah, for a sense, but my, I think my dad was a bigger mentor for me. Okay. Um, Did he play baseball? He didn't play baseball, but he always used to study the game and try to give me the best uh, knowledge of the game and just study the game as I was studying it. Uh, we could we both bounced ideas off each other and we just learned. So. Yeah, has he helped you a lot? Like last year, Omaha, leading you there, was he the one you called when you're like, "Hey, Dad, what do I do? I'm in this situation. I'm stressed. I'm worried about a game. I'm anxious about this game. What do I do?" No, 100%. He, he, he was, yeah, he was, him, <laughs> him and my mom were always the ones that I would call, call back home, hey, mom, I'm struggling with this, dad, I need this. Like, they would always help me out and support me, and uh, I always loved them and appreciate them for that. So, thank you, mom <laughs> and dad. Shout out. <laughs> and at three years old, are we talking like you're taking baseball seriously, or are we playing in the dirt? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't it's a, a little too that's long That's a little ago. too, yeah, exactly right. Uh, that's a question I should ask my mom, because yeah, she would probably tell me. Yeah, we need some pictures. We need some proof that yes. you actually play. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony, who would you say your role model was growing up? Uh, both of my parents are sure, just like Lewis. I yeah. mean, we both come from a Hispanic household, so we both know how tough 
they can, our parents can be on us getting the chancla and all that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my parents showed me what hard work is. Uh, my mom, she works with special needs kids. She comes home with bruises all, all the time, getting hit, and she still continues to do it just because she loves it. So I kind of translated that to like baseball. However, Absolutely. if it hit, breaks me down, I know I can get back up just like my mom because what she's doing is nothing compared to what I'm doing. So, And then my dad works hard too and he hits me fun he, in high school he would hit me fungo every single day um after school and even when i go back home he hits me fungo every single day um get, hits me ground balls and all that and continues to help me get better so is he that guy for you when you guys went to omaha yes and him, you both your parents yes both of my parents i mean if i was nervous i would call them if i was yeah. shaking i mean my freshman year before my first game i called them so yeah. um yeah they're they were my rock that i leaned on were so. they able to come watch some games Oh yeah, I mean they're friends with all the locals here now. <laughs> they they they're actually coming this weekend, so to, for the football game. So I'll be able to see them. They'll, my dad will cook for me, carne guisada. If you, whoever knows, if anyone knows what that is, but it's really good. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I really I love them and love that they were able to come see me a lot last year. Obviously, you guys have some great role models. Do you guys think that you have a baseball player specifically that you kind of looked up to and like wanted to like be him when you were younger? I mean, even now, some if, time you're to out, think about if you're it? out there pitching, if you're out there at shortstop, is there a player that you want to copy this play that he did? You're trying to copy this pitch, change your grip. Like, who's um, that player for you? Yeah. Oh, for me right now, I look up to Jeremy Pena, one, because he's a great shortstop. Uh, I love watching him play, too, because he plays for the Astros. Um, my favorite team. I, I oh, actually, you just said that out loud? Yeah. I don't care <laughs> okay. what anyone else says. I love the Astros, okay. and no one can take that away from me. But <laughs> I'll actually see them play the Rangers in... A week or so so but yeah Jeremy Pena I love watching him play it was cool playing at Minute Maid Park last year yeah. I kind of like imagined myself as him yeah. and yeah I think I, I love I love watching him play I love his swing love his approach mm -hmm. love how hard he works um, all that so I think mine would be Corbin Burns um, for the Brewers uh, he throws a cutter as well and I've, I'm throwing a cutter and I just try to base all my stuff off of his and like just try to work and have the same mentality that he does on the field so I think that's my player is your favorite pitch a cutter? No, I think my favorite pitch is a slider. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we know you guys are super into baseball. You've been baseball since day one. But were there, was there any other time you were like, oh, maybe I could do football. Maybe I'm like a wrestler. I don't know, like high school, middle school? I actually had a decision to make when I was like 11, 12, okay. uh, between soccer and baseball. And, it was just getting too hectic for my parents to drive me around all over yeah. the place, so I had to make the decision. I chose baseball. What um, kind of went into that decision? Uh, um, it trying was, to think about <laughs> it. It was a long time ago. It was a very long time ago, but uh, I think I just I love the sport too much. Um, I love the atmosphere created for me, the people it brought to me, and the friendships that I created within the sport. Yeah. And I think that's what like kind of drew me more towards baseball and the ability to travel and go all over the world uh, for baseball is, is amazing. Do you think that's kind of like something consistent you see in baseball with every team you've been on, just getting super close? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, you're with the guys almost 24 seven. You're playing, you're traveling, you're hanging out with them on the hotel lobby. You're doing so much with them that you just had to kind of build a relationship with everybody. Um, and I feel like with all the teams I've been to, I've created relationships with everybody. And I still to this day, I still talk to people that yeah. I've known for years. So. Sidebar, who is your favorite person? If you're going to pick someone on the team to room with, who are you picking? On TCU? Yeah. Yes. You don't have to pick me. You're good. If it's not each other, then we're going to have a problem here. I think we might have to argument. separate you. Yeah. Gabe Miranda. Shout out, Gabe Miranda. Um, okay, valid. He, he is my roommate here. right now, though. He, brought, he is my roommate. I would choose him, though, 100%. Him like or Carson. Like at TCU? Roommate? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Anthony? Fisher Ingersoll. <laughs> <laughs> He's my roommate right now. I love that guy. Funniest guy. And, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't trade him for the world. I love that guy. Shout out you, Fish. Were you guys pretty close last year? Yes, I would say we were pretty close. We knew each other. We went to something. Well, US, it was USA Trials? U USA Trials, yeah. I mean, and we've gone to church plenty of times together, too. So we have kind of, we, we, we can relate a lot because of our background, Hispanic, all that. Um, we're both Catholic, so we really bond over that stuff, too. 
Was that the first time you guys met at the USA trials? Yes, I met him, Gabe, and Carson. Okay. So I heard that they were, they were the only other TCU commits there, and I was kind of... Flocked to them. Yeah, flocked to them and hung out with them a, a bunch, and Absolutely. I really enjoyed it, and that's kind of where we all started our, our brotherhood, and I would say I'm pretty close to Gabe and Carson as well, too. Absolutely, I love that. Yeah. Who is, like, the hardest player that you had to say goodbye to who committed last year? It's a tough question. Um, <laughs> we could get like a group going if you need a little. Yeah. A little more than you could give I mean, a couple of players. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'll Not give the whole you all team, though. Okay. I mean, I, I think the one that I hung out with the most that left was Cole Fontenelle. Mm -hmm. Probably, if you've ever met him, the best storyteller you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. He could tell stories for hours. If you're eating dinner with him, he'll finish his dinner like an hour after you because he's talking so much. But <laughs> he's probably one of my top ones. And then Braden Taylor and then. Trey Richardson, both of them love those guys. They're like brothers to me in the infield. They they were really good mentors to me as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, I miss all those guys, all those guys, and I know they're doing really well right now. So, what do you think was the biggest advice they gave to you? Talking about them being mentors. Um, that I I'm here for a reason, yeah. and that if I ever doubt myself, I shouldn't because yeah, I'm here for a reason. And I've had six, six certain success uh, for a reason because of uh, your hard my hard work. So. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was probably Sammy, okay. um, Stouty, or uh, Brandon Taylor as well. Uh, great mentors, great people. Uh, loved, loved how they went about their game and just the dog mentality that they showed on the field every day. So, yeah. Absolutely, I love that. And then a little bit of a transition. We want to go ahead and talk about some NIL stuff because it's been a huge, a huge addition to just college sports in general. So we know we have the Flying T Club. So what has that kind of done for you in terms of NIL? I mean, they've given us great opportunities such as this and a bunch of other like volunteering opportunities and like being on another talk show with y'all yeah. uh, that was pretty fun um, are you tired of us yet no <laughs> not yet but, okay. um, <laughs> maybe at the end <laughs> maybe we'll see but um no we're just really thankful and blessed that uh we're part of their i guess family because yeah. i mean yeah that's what tcu is a family and we can't thank them enough like Silva said, we're just very grateful for the opportunity they gave us. Um, we are part of the family. They, we go to all events and stuff like that and just try to show our face to the community and just get to know the community a little bit more at Fort Worth. Uh, we know that you guys support us a lot, and we're very grateful for that. So yeah. thank you, guys. Yeah. What do you guys have to do for that? Is there anything you have to do every year for, to keep up your NIL status or with the Flying Tea Club, anything like that? Well, we do come do interviews with you guys and stuff like that, interviews, and uh, we go out to public and help out. We even go to ch uh, children's uh, schools and help them out as well, yeah. um, fix stuff up. So that's, that's the type of stuff we do, just give our time to the, the community. Yeah. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yep, that's... He, he covered said it, it all. all. Yeah. He said it perfectly. <laughs> he said it perfect. Our last question before we go to our first break, I'm going to let you guys have a breather. What do you guys do outside of baseball? I know that it's a lot of baseball, school, I mean, just being with friends. But kind of, what other hobbies do we have? I mean, uh, are you like a colorer? No, <laughs> I Make mean, bracelets? Well, something I guess consistently that I do every day is I FaceTime my parents, my mom, my dad. I, That's a good when hobby. I'm, when I'm home, I like to see my dogs. Shout yeah. out Orbit. I miss that guy. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. But, um, yeah, I mean, I would say just chill. Fisher and I just chill, sit in our bean bags, watch movies. Mm -hmm. um, we'll hang out with each other, hang out with the baseball guys. We'll go hang out with other friends. Uh, I mean, football season's starting soon, so we'll be going to those that a lot. And yeah. 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 No, for sure. We probably just hanging out, calling my mom and my dad. Um, always every night, just giving them a call because, of course, you got a chicken with the Hispanic household. Um, but, but besides that, I just chill out and enjoy my time with my friends and get my homework done. So. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And coming out right now, we have the Burger of the Week with John's Grill. You know, they have a new one every single week. Such a great thing to try. And the chicken fried steak. You don't want to miss either of these. And when we come back, we've got a ton more to talk about with baseball and even a little bit of football later. Stay with us. You know, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were able to do this year without the Flying Tea Club. So we got to continue to, to get people involved. It's it's more important right now than it's ever been. Flying Tea is special. It's, it's, it's the best thing that I've encountered in college. It allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover. If people like winning, invest in, in, in the Flying Tea Club and NIL. It's almost a necessity now in uh, the college football world. I mean, you got to kind of invest uh, in the programs, and what you put in is what you get out. 
John's Grill is the newest venture from John Bunnell and the Bunnell's Restaurant Group. A ranch to table concept featuring food, beer, and spirits from around the great state of Texas. Our menu is designed by Chef Sean Alvarez and features two chef inspired burgers the fatty and the flatty, plus a brisket menu perfect for your casual night out. Fast casual service in a fun, relaxed, family friendly environment. Featuring 11 big screen TVs for you to catch the big game on. Our mixology team has created a craft cocktail and beer menu featuring local spirits and brews from across Texas. John's Grill, home of the Players Club show each week. 2905 West Berry Street in Fort Worth or online at johnsgrill.com. Welcome back to Players Club at John's Grill. We are so excited, especially to have all this food. Anthony has been chowing down while you we were guys on should break. Have, you what guys a guy. Have and he's even feed. so <laughs> nice enough to wait to take his first bite on camera. We're going to get a first reaction right here. Anthony, go for it. Okay. You guys should have seen him during break. He chowed down that chicken fried steak. He's got a milkshake on the way, too. What are we thinking? Two first. It's very Don't good. Don't choke. <laughs> Can we get like a scale of one to ten best burgers? Mm. Oh, I didn't expect this stuff one. Oh, there's oh, a lot oh. down there. Oh, yeah. I would say ten out of ten. It's a pretty darn good burger. Yeah? Yeah, I need a napkin, though. Yeah, you do need a napkin. <laughs> Maybe we can get one when your milkshake comes out. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going to take another bite. <laughs> okay, so it's definitely good. Lewis, are you interested in any of it? No, I'm good right now. I'm okay. going to diet. Okay. I gotta lose some weight. You got a girl dinner going on right now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get back into, you know. Just Wait, talking. hold up. We're gonna bring up the coaches real quick. Coach Bruce. Come on, here. Coach Delora. We Coach have Delora. some coaches here at John's Grill. Let's see. I mean, we can't, can't talk about the season without the coaches. Hey, let's go. Am I trying the burger? No, no, no. We're you talking baseball. Unless he wants some burger. No, uh, we're about to order. Okay, okay. No need an appetizer? Uh, yeah. Plenty of <laughs> okay. Going back, just starting with, honestly, let's start at the end. Let's go to Omaha. What was that like just knowing that this team had made it? I mean, it's it's the really the pinnacle of what you want to do, right? It's it's You're trying to win a national title, and I think at, at the end of the day, when you have a chance to go to Omaha, um, and you do it, it, it's a huge deal. And then now, for us not only get there, I think the biggest thing now is to win one. Um, but I think the feeling of having, and feeling of having a, a family type atmosphere, which Coach Sarlos has and what the program stands for, it's just you're so happy for everybody else and to see them celebrate and see how excited they are because of all the hard work, it's, it, it, it's pretty neat. I was extremely happy for the players, not only the high school guys, but all the newcomers we had from, you know, the portal. Because for these guys, like, I, I know this group way more than I know the older guys we've had just from a recruiting standpoint. So everything that you guys know and have been talked about and even, you know, the portal players now, like, Omaha is the goal. So to see you guys actually fulfill that was awesome because, like, that's what we've been talking about for you know for you guys like four years right so to actually see that happen especially after the start that we had was really satisfying and, and happy for you guys to you know go through it so that kind of conversation that mindset doesn't just start like now in the fall that starts from when they're getting recruited oh yeah like we have all of our 25s coming in this weekend uh first official time they can get on practice or uh, on campus excuse me and they're going to watch practice and be around it, and Omaha is going to be a big talking point. We heard they might even be at the football game. They'll be there. Oh, yeah, pregame. We're going to try to get a pick with Prime. Sorry, son. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It happens. Would you say that getting to Omaha and getting to that point last year gives you a little bit of an oomph this year to work extra hard? You know, you see that you can get to that point. You know, what are you expecting? That yeah, I mean, year? that's always the expectation here. I mean, since I've been here, which was uh, 2019, we were coming off the run of four straight years, and we'd go out and, you know, have lunch, and I'm new here, and we'd have people come up to us, hey, you're going back to Omaha this year? 
like the expectation is that every single year and there's added pressure to it but for us as players and as coaches part of this program and the family it's like well why would you want to be anywhere else so going back's awesome because you know we've kind of moved the needle for the program you know closer to full right like we went four years in a row and that thing was pretty much full except for winning the big one you know and then to be honest we probably took a you know a couple steps back because we hadn't gone there and that's the expectation and the goal so now we're back and it's like all right the needle's been moved again so you know yes we want to go back every single year and like coach bruce said like we have we have to put the big banner up you know we haven't accomplished that yet so the guys have been awesome so far the first couple weeks motivation's extremely high you know the work that's being put in has been awesome um and it starts with these guys and their mindset and the foundation they have and you know teaching the new guys whether it's a fifth year grad transfer or you know a freshman do you think you guys try and more take it one game at a time or do you think that seriously from when the season starts it's like we're going to omaha just win this one coach bruce go ahead i got two in a row go ahead <laughs> yeah i mean I, th- I think ultimately you know there, there's a saying that i know we use quite often is is be where you need to be when you need to be there right so I'll just use this right now. We're here doing this interview, and that's the, that's the most important place where we it's need where to they be, gotta be is right here. And so be right here. When you're tying your shoes, tie your shoes. When you're uh, putting on your pants, put on your pants. And I think that's something that if you can do that and really limit everything into breaths, pitches, um, that's something that we talk about quite a bit because it, you have a chance to get – ahead of yourself you know you can only see out of the out of the windshield 200 feet ahead right so that's the most important time of the year and and right now today was the most important practice of the year so we do talk about that quite a bit and i think it's hard i think it's really hard to be present it's easy to say but really hard to do Um, but these guys have done a really good job and they're again it starts at the top Mm -hmm. you know and, and that's that's with kirk and then it bleeds down to everybody else but i think what john said too it goes into the players that John's recruiting, and he can say it's a group team effort. effort. He can say it's a group effort all he wants, but John's lead. John's our recruiting coordinator, and John's leading our program in 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 the recruiting phase. And it starts with these guys in high school, and and you want winners. You know, TCU is a special place. You were one of ten schools in the country that woke up today that can actually win a national title, and I think that that speaks volumes of everybody here absolutely and that's kind of definitely like a mindset that you guys have obviously established do you guys have someone specifically working with your players to kind of develop those like mindfulness habits yeah i mean we you know we've we've over time um we've used brian kane um quite a bit uh we transitioned this year to a guy by the name of dean wellums who runs team elite who dean um Dean's really focused on the here, the now, and a lot of team building. And I think that's a lot of it. And I think it's it's really just carrying the message and the vision, um, as we all do, on what Kirk wants and then carrying it out. And and at the end of the day, we want to be player-led, not coach-fed. And that, that's the biggest deal um, that when when Dean's working with us, that's that this is their team. We're, Hopefully, by the time May comes around, we're following their lead and they're telling us what to do. So kind of as fans, what can we expect to see from TCU baseball? After this question, we'll let you guys go eat your food. (laughs) My stock answer to that is I'll let you know in April. Okay, (laughs) okay, I'll ask again in April. Are we going with the same answer over there? Well, it's 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 an awesome group of kids, as, as always. We have a unique blend of some older guys that are new, that have credentials, that have played in the World Series, that have won a national championship. And with, our com- with that and our combination of our you know, returners that now have reached the pinnacle and have gone through it and all of this experience, I think it's a unique blend of you know, both worlds. Um, you know, last year, I think we were you know, a lot more on the younger side. Um, we did have some older guys, but they hadn't been there and done it. You know, now it's safe to say for the most part, like everybody on our roster has a taste of, you know, a really high level of college baseball. So from an at-bat standpoint, an innings log standpoint, there's a lot of experience. But, you know, in today's world with recruiting, you're going to have a blend more of, you know, the portal players and, you know, the younger guys. So for for this group, you know, we got to figure that chemistry and camaraderie out and 
you know, so far, you know, so good. And it just goes back to the kids. You know, they're, they're awesome and come from great families. And, you know, for us, that's always been a big part of the recruiting process. But I, we, I think we missed on both of you guys. So. <laughs> well, one more question, maybe. Can you tell us a little bit about both of these guys right here? I mean, they're not going to tell us what kind of players they are. They're going to be. You want to see a guy put down food? Watch Anthony Silva. Well, we're Silva seeing eat. it right now. No, but these guys have been awesome, man. I mean, you know, remember watching Anthony, you know, in high school. Uh, first time I saw him was in Franklin. You know, we were sweating. It was actually hotter than it is, you know, right now in Texas, but. You know, it goes back to, you know, our relationship now has been like four, going on four more years. And by the time it's all said and done, it'll be five, six. And it's just cool watching these guys, you know, as youngsters and they grow up and, you know, they mature and, you know, the work ethic's always been great. But, you know, you know, Louis, same thing. Like he was going to another school and we were lucky enough to get him. I remember watching you at USA. You were throwing cutters all the time. Like you actually, you got shelled. You were one of the worst guys that threw. And Los was up there, was you know, me and him were there, and he's like, we're gonna get that, like that guy's, that guy's gonna be good, you know. So for me, and I'm newer into this than Coach Bruce is, he has way more experience. Not to make you sound old, Coach, but <laughs> like for me, it's cool watching you guys when you're youngsters, and then now you're getting to a point where, you know, we're actually seeing the fruits of the labor of you know recruiting and what you guys have accomplished both on and off the field, and that's for me selfishly, like that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll echo everything John said, but I think the, the two words come to mind is, is, or I guess one word, what we talk about a, a lot is being a street, being in a street fight. And I'll tell you right now, if 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 a street fight went down, I want these two guys with me. And, and I think, in my opinion, that's one of the biggest compliments you can get. Um, the results are the results. What they are, what they are. But guys that put their hard hat on every day, that are coming willing to work. And there's no doubt that these guys want to win a national title. And every time they step on the field, that's their goal. That's what drives them on top of being good human beings. I mean, they're unbelievable human beings. They're people that, uh, you know, I got two boys. And I hope one day my boys grow up like these two guys and grow up just like them and be like them. And um, so I, I think. When that happens, you got something special, and it's fun. That's like John said, it's really fun to be in the same dugout and put the same uniform on because it ends up becoming a baseball conversation. It's not player coach, um, it's not coach player. It's just it's it's just an organic conversation, and that's what's going to go down um, the whole year. And I think that's what it is. So these guys, we're fortunate as coaches to be around these guys. These guys make us better. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Appreciate us. it. Go no Frogs. Yes. We interrupted you a little bit, but we appreciate you. <laughs> so in case you missed it, Anthony got a massive shake while we were speaking. Do you want me to try right now? Yeah, I want you to give us our your first reaction. Again. Anthony, any guesses as to what kind of milkshake this is? Uh, might Looking be a like strawberry vanilla? something. I don't strawberry. Know. Oh, good guess. It's definitely a it's s'mores. It's white, and he guesses strawberry. <laughs> um, okay, I, I don't know how to approach this, but I'll throw this in here. Uh, yeah. I guess I'll take the first bite out of oh. oh, it's spilling a little bit. It's all right. It's okay. I guess I'll take a bite out of this marshmallow. That You're going just the marshmallow That's first? Yeah, marshmallow. Okay. Get a little taste. That, that is a pure marshmallow for Big bite. watching. Very good marshmallow. Okay. Can we see a little bit of the ice cream now? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Can we get a one through ten on the milkshake? Eleven. Eleven. One of the, one of the wow. best milkshakes I've ever had. Beat the burger. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you enjoy <laughs> this. Let's go ahead and send it over Courtney and Lewis with our first question of this segment. Coming back to you guys. Okay. Well, speaking of team chemistry, we just talked a lot about that with your coaches. I know you saw, you were there last year and you played a big leader role. Even though you were a freshman, you're coming back this year as a sophomore, you were there the whole season. You went to Omaha. You fought a cold war during that season. How would you say your leadership role in this season or this upcoming season is going to improve or step up this year? I think it's just showing support to those who haven't been there, um, just guiding them into the right path. I know it's not an easy path. We went through our ups and downs throughout the season. 
Um, but mentally, you have to be strong and just trying to help, help the newer guys be mentally strong that everything is going to be okay no matter what. We have great coaching, great people to support us. So I think everybody will be fine um, as long as we keep our mental state uh, yeah. good. Yep. Have you been mentoring any of the incoming freshmen or transfers? How Not does yet. That look like? Not yet. I'm just probably building my relationship with those guys. Yeah. So um, I think it's a slow process and uh, see who I'm taking under my wing this year. So we'll see. I mean, you guys had a, definitely had a very strong chemistry last year as a team. At, with your coaches, individual, like outside of off the field. But it's going to take a while to build that chemistry back, especially bringing in a lot of new players and transfers. It's going to take a while, but I think you guys got it, and you guys are going to have a great season upcoming, and we are so excited to watch you guys play. Absolutely. Anthony. Thank you, guys. Happy. Anthony's ready now. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's taking a couple bites. He's ready for a little break. Yeah. Give I'm the stomach a break. Saving it for later. Saving up for later. <laughs> so going back to Omaha, what do you think that you guys learned from that experience being there? Like how you can take it farther this season? I mean, it's definitely. Sorry, I probably have no. It's no okay. Shake on you my need face. Um, maybe. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, th I thought it was pretty cool that we made it. Obviously, that was our one of our goals, but we got a little bit of t a taste in our mouth. And when you, you're there, you don't want to leave. Yeah. And that's motivation. When we did leave, when we lost, uh, we we're what three wins away, four wins away from winning the whole thing. And that's extra motivation that we all have, all the returners, and we're passing that down to the newcomers, the transfers, all the freshmen. So we're definitely, I would say, a lot more motivated this year than last year because we were so close and we just obviously didn't win. But, yeah, I would say we're very motivated. Lewis, would you say the same about motivation? Yeah, 100%. I think you just got to keep on uh, pushing through everything. I know it was a hard, it was a dogfight out there. Um, but knowing that we're the best team out there, that's all we can do and just win. So that's kind of been the conversation, the mentality. I guess we heard from your coaches that you come in knowing you want to go to Omaha. So that's how you guys were recruited as well. Right, yes, yeah. I mean, that's why Yeah. That's why we came to TCU. It's a pulling factor. Right, exactly, because we know this is a, such a great program. The culture is it. amazing, yeah. That we have the right resources, the right coaches, the right strength coach, all that, um, and great support staff. So we know... It'll just be that much easier when we come here to go to Omaha. And just a little Omaha question. So I saw some social media stuff. Was there like a like a banquet, a little thing you guys went to with a carpet? Talk, talk Tell me about, about that. that. That's special. Yeah. <laughs> you have yourself a um, night? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't one of the guys who danced, luckily. Oh. Um, I didn't get to show off my moves. But <laughs> there was some entertainment I guess um, yeah. there was a piano guy I forgot their names there was two of them and uh -huh. we all got like introduced I get like all our teams yeah. and there was a twerking contest oh, actually oh, um, between two guys one from LSU and then another dude from Oral Roberts um, the LSU guy won and that was I have a video on my phone it's a uh, it's pretty cool you, were you judging uh, well yeah he was on our team so we divided the room in half and <laughs> And whichever side screamed the loudest or was the oh. loudest. Were you participating in this contest? Uh, unfortunately, no, oh. I wasn't. I probably would have won. <laughs> that's why. No, it would have been a no-brainer if I if I would have. They were scared. Joined. Yeah, they were all scared. Yeah. So, um, but no, it was really fun. It was we got to. It was cool getting to like see all the other teams' personalities and stuff. Yeah. And re realizing that like they're just like us. They're college kids. Yeah. They're RAs. They're here having fun just like us. Um, and this, it was one of their goals, and they accomplished it. So it was pretty cool seeing all that. Lewis, so you have a story? <laughs> no story. Uh, like None Anthony's you want to share? Nope. <laughs> that, okay, we'll keep it at that then. Lewis. So you guys kind of talked about just like being friends with other teams there. Do you guys think that you were able to kind of make friends and then be able to look at them as competitors the next day, or is that kind of a hard thing to do? I think in the bait, like, I think the baseball community is, it's pretty easy to become friends with someone unless they're absolutely, like, they're mean to you, I would say, like that. Don't want to use any other words. But Valid. Yeah, but no, I think all, all baseball players are pretty good at switching their mentalities when it comes to game time, even though if you've known someone for years, like 10 years or whatever. Um, but yeah, like, during the games, we still, like, talk to each other. Like, if someone's at second base, I say, like, what's up, man? Like, how are you doing? Like... So that's not always trash talk when we see that. No, it's I, it's probably never trash talk. You'll see me really? smiling. Yeah, unless okay. it's like unless if the game's competitive, you know, then it probably is trash okay. talk. But most of the time, it's not. Okay. So. 
Anthony hit it on the head. <laughs> Anthony's such a great talker. <laughs> right? <laughs> Switching a little bit. Lewis, we just saw Anthony's post on TCU Baseball's Instagram about him designing his own glove. Did you get to design your own glove as well? I did, actually. What does um, it look like? Mine's going to be all black glove. Uh, the laces are going to be black as well with lizard skin all over it. Oh. Um, and the stitching is going to be white. So okay. hopefully it comes out looking how I want it to look. I mean, it um, I'm pretty. Cool. I'm pretty sure it's going to look cool, so we'll, we'll see. What is that process of that? Do they do that? Is that an every year thing? Yeah, that's an every okay. year thing. That's correct. Yep. Tell us about your glove. Um, well, if you look on the TCU Baseball Instagram page, uh, you'll see my glove. But um, it's brown on the outside and purple on the inside. Uh, pretty simple, I would say. It's pretty cool. Um, last year, my glove was white on the inside and purple on oh, the outside. Oh, big change. Yeah, but I actually didn't use it because I didn't break it in on time. So I used my high school glove okay. last year, which it... It, one of the laces broke during the during the super regional or the regional against Arkansas and shout out Brad he fixed it right before the game, but uh, yeah and right now I'm using my I'm still using my high school glove because my <laughs> other glove still isn't broken in yet so hopefully I can have enough time to break in my new glove when it comes in. Lewis, what did yours look like last year? I also had a black one. Um, okay. It was uh, purple laces, uh, just all black purple laces, nothing crazy. No um, purple this year. Uh, no purple this year. Wow. Kept it simple this year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are kind of like able to change up your glove there. So that might not be a superstition for you guys, but we know baseball is kind of filled with them. Are you guys like some crazy superstitious players? Do you guys eat the same restaurants if you have a good game? Do you eat the same food? Do you change your for, underwear? Well, for me, it's not really a superstition, but uh, I like going to get uh, lemon pepper wings okay. as often as I can. So I like going to either Buffalo Wild Wings okay. or uh, Buffalo Bros to get some lemon pepper wings as a little treat if it's we like win. It's like on game day? Okay, yeah. after. So, yeah. But in high school, I did a little bit this year, but I would eat chicken nuggets before or okay. on game days. Um, and then From I From where? McDonald's or uh, I would just heat up the ones that my mom bought from Sam's. <laughs> so, okay. Um, but also... I put my left sock on before my right sock, and then my left shoe on before my right shoe, and then, yeah, I would I say just that. Do you do that every game, or do you switch it up if you have, like, a bad game or anything like that? You um, just do the same thing? Yeah, I usually do the same thing, um, but, yeah, I mean, every day, I mean, I woke up today, put my left sock before my right, it's just like <laughs> Oh, muscle, it's an everyday thing. It's just muscle This isn't memory. even baseball yeah. season, guys. I guess not. It's just, I guess it's a habit, you would say, but... <laughs> I have a, I might have a couple other superstitions that I'm not thinking about, but yeah. Lewis, do you have anything? I think mine is I do everything in pairs of two. Okay. Like I, uh, with my belt, like I have to do it twice. Um, it's, okay. it's a weird thing. I don't, I don't know why. I've always had the superstition, um, and then a prayer before I go out and pitch. I think that's the only crazy stuff that I do. But uh, besides that, there's nothing too crazy like Anthony. Tell me a little more about the twos. What else are we talking? The belt. Um, you wear like two pairs of socks, no, 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 like, laces. So like I'll put on a shirt, I have to take it off again and put it back on because I have to do it in two. You put I, it back I on that. and yes, off. I swear I do that. You do not. Yeah. What about your socks? Do that? Like, no, 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 not the socks. Because the socks are two socks. Yeah. So it, no, it's okay. No, 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 I don't wear two socks. I wear one sock or, or two pairs of socks, but for Wait, each leg. Yeah. Like one pair of socks, one pair of socks. I don't put on two pairs of socks on each leg. Like, okay. Put like, them on regular. Yeah, I put them on regular. I don't do anything crazy. Do you go left, right first, or do you don't think about it? I don't think about it. I wouldn't uh, either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some definitely some crazy superstitions out there. I'm not going to say the name, but someone last year might have put on a pair of girls' underwear um, when they were doing bad, but I'm not going to name any names, but, yeah, that's... That's good. Oh, crazy. also, um, Tiger Bomb. Yeah, Tiger Bomb on places you don't want to name or know, so... But that's getting into too much detail. Is that the craziest one that you've seen or heard of? Yes, I think that's definitely top, but there's other ones that I can't disclose because okay. they're just cr too crazy to <laughs> On say. camera, yeah. this is all we're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I see where you're going with this. So we got to talk to a little bit of your assistant coaches and such, but talk to us about what it's like playing under Sarlos. Love the guy. Great dude. Um, we share a lot of similarities. Um, I know 
when he was in the pro career, he didn't throw as hard. I don't throw that hard. So we, we share that knowledge that uh, it's not all about velocity and spotting up your pitches is what you need to do at, yeah. uh, at this level. Um, even going on, going on in future levels, I mean, the, the velocity will come. But I think just having that ability where we could talk, like, not about velocity, but spotting up pitches and what to do, how to feel certain pitches and stuff like that. But uh, I love the guy, great guy. Would do anything for the guy, so. Yeah, I would say I love him, too. Um, he's family. All the coaching staff is family. Um, for example, like um, at Thanksgiving break, I came here a little early, and I told him if he wanted, I asked him if he wanted to get dinner somewhere. He was like, yeah, come over. I'm cooking, I'm cooking wings, and I ate with his whole family. Uh, every, I think every single person on the team every year knows his family personally, and Lane, his younger daughter, is always at the field. Um, and, yeah, I would say he's family. He would do anything for us. We would do anything for him. And that goes with the whole coaching staff, the whole team. So we all love him. Did you know anything about his coaching style before TCU? Was that a part of the reason why TCU was a high up on the option list for? No, I think uh, it was more for me. He was so laid back. Uh, Always wearing sandals, flip or flip flops, shorts, and the uh, polo. Just so laid just back. very laid back. Loved, yeah. loved the, everything he had to offer for me, and I just kind of gravitated towards You're him. Like so, I yeah. know he's the guy. Exactly right. Yeah. He's gonna get me where I want to yes. be. One hundred percent. Yeah, he was the one who actually recruited me. Like I would talk to him the most. He wasn't head coach at the time when I was being recruited, but he was probably one of the main factors because he was treating me already like family when I wasn't even on campus yet. He was treating me like. He had already known me for years. He knew all my siblings' names, my parents, what they did, my my younger siblings, how they like what they're doing, all that. He would ask me how they did, like at their at my sister's volleyball game. He'd ask me how that went. So, I think that just that tells you what kind of person he is and what kind of family we are. Um, not just right when we get on campus, but before while we're getting recruited. I think that speaks a lot of volume about your team chemistry and stuff like that. It's not only with the players, it's with the coaches. And I think he's a big part in getting you guys there to have that chemistry. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Talking about that team chemistry. So you guys are now sophomores, <laughs> big guys on campus. A little bit? No, not on the team. Not on this team. No. <laughs> There's a lot of freshmen coming in. Do you guys think that you pick out specific players that you're like, oh, that's my guy this season? Like we do that? You no, know, like I think it just like naturally that. happens. Uh, In like a sorority. <laughs> I guess we're not like girls. I mean, no. we don't, we don't you don't like have a guy. Uh, it's like I all mean, the guys. There's definitely guys that you grab it just naturally gravitate towards. Um, Can we get a name drop? I mean, for example, like Ryder Robinson. Shout out Ryder. Uh, also from Utah, just like my roommate, Fisher. Um, he plays shortstop. He's been getting reps with me at shortstop mm -hmm. too. So we've just been bouncing ideas off, off of each other, giving him pointers, just like like Braden Taylor and like Trey gave me before or when I was a freshman. Yeah. So um, I guess it just naturally happens. Usually I would say it's people that are your position. You usually hang out with them the most and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's it's different for everybody. I would say. No, 100%. Uh, for me, I think it's Jax Lewis. I, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. But it, 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 I think it just happens naturally. It's not something still you force. Still up in the air. Yeah, you don't you don't force that. Okay. You got uh, you got time. It's still yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. You're still scouting out. You'll find your man. I guess so. <laughs> You'll find your guy. Don't worry about it. Hopefully. So with those new players, there's also the older guys coming back in. What do you think? Has, do you think there's been a shift in the team chemistry? Like, do you think it's a little different? Or you think it's the same? I think it's the same. I think I think we just have to uh, have the freshmen buy in, and yeah. then the, and then the people that are transferring in. Um, I think it's just uh, having them buy into what we, uh, the chemistry we want to build yeah. for the team, and uh, the friendships and the, the lifelong like, lifelong friendships we want to create for us. So. Yeah, I would say like all the new guys, the uh, transfers, the freshmen, mm -hmm. um, they're already like. Very nice. I, every, there's no bad blood between anybody, or at least I don't know. But you I, haven't heard I, about it. You're yeah, not in yeah. the loop. No, I don't, I don't think there's any drama going on. But okay, we're, we're all pretty close. We've all hung out so many times already with each other. And like, for example, like like eight of us were in the cold tub today, just like laughing and all that. And just like last year, I mean, it reminded me of last year because we were all so close, um, cracking jokes with each other. Everyone knows each other personally for the most part, I would say. So I, I feel like the new guys are definitely bought in, freshmen and, and transfers. They're a bunch of hardworking guys too, and, and it just makes me that more ex that much more excited for the upcoming season. Is there anything that the team hosts to kind of get those new guys involved? Well, Team our, sanctioned. Well, our, uh, we actually have a Labor Day party coming up. Oh, uh, okay. Are you excited? 
Yes, very excited. We get a, I think we're going to Coach Los's house, so we're going to go swimming at his pool. Okay. Which will be fun. Um, but I, I, we also do a lot of like team bonding with our with Dean, mm-hmm. our mental strength guy. So yeah. we all, we all, everyone knows each other's names, hopefully. Um, oh. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's 23 new guys and 19 returners. Wow, so that's a lot. That's a lot of new names. It was kind of tough for me, but I think I got it now. Got it um, now. But yeah, we all love each other. Um, yeah, obviously we can butt heads just like brothers, but at the end of the day, we're family and we're all fighting for the same thing, a national championship. And if we're not with each other on each other's side, um, then the team's going to fall apart. So, But everyone's doing really well for the most part. And yeah. Lewis, what are you looking forward to at the Labor Day party? Jumping in the pool. Jumping in the yeah. pool. It's going to be a hot one. Yeah, most definitely. So I'm getting ready to jump in the pool, getting that body ready. Okay. Uh, that's why I'm going to diet. No milkshake for you. No tonight. milkshake for me. Yep. Okay. Who's, co- who's cooking at this? Or is uh, it like I think Sarlos? Sarlos. Sarlos. Yeah, Kirk. I think Sarlos will. Coach. Yeah, that's a, or no, I think he'll probably cater food. <laughs> that's <laughs> a lot of guys. Yeah, there's too much him. guys. So, um, <laughs> but no, he's a great host. We love going to his house, so, hanging with his family. I mean, his dog. He brings his dog Bud, a golden retriever, to the field all the time, Aww. and we all love seeing him. So, um, but yeah, I think the, it'll probably be Mexican food like he usually does. Oh. So. We're looking forward Can't to that. Can't go wrong. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Going back to kind of that student-athlete mentality, being a student first, do you guys tend to have a lot of classes together? Is that on purpose? Yeah, I think it's just the way our schedules work because we're all trying to get all our classes done yeah. in the morning before practice so we can have the rest of the evening for mm-hmm. practice. Um, but this semester, I have every single, every single class is with the baseball guy. Lewis is in one of my classes, our math class. We need to do homework tonight. Yeah. Can't forget about that. But no. Or my yeah, deal. Yeah. For, for the most part, we're all, I mean, I'm sure like 75% of the guys are communication majors. So mm-hmm. a lot of them have the same classes. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, they, we do class checks too. So we have to go to class. We don't get let off the hook. Yeah. We can't skip. So yeah, it's pretty fun having Keeps you accountable. Class. Yeah, exactly. Lewis, Lewis do you have any, any classes other, with the other guys? Are there any other criminal justice majors? I think there's a couple. I'm not sure who okay. uh, exactly it is, but I'm pretty sure we have a couple of criminal justice majors. So. None. You have? Do you have any class with any of them? Or no, I don't. Surprisingly, seen? I don't. Um, actually, the only the only I have two classes with uh, baseball guys. Oh, really? The rest of the classes I have I'm by myself. So, I get to meet new people. So. Yeah. 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 How many hours do you guys have to take this semester for classes? We're in 15, but okay. I mean. Solid. Yeah. So I mean, we can drop a class if we want to, or. If we have a good reason to, <laughs> um, but uh, we're we're in 15 every single semester, so that's really good. Um, and obviously, there we don't get just the easiest classes. We actually have to try because um, school first. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you're falling behind because of practice or games or traveling or anything? Or no, I would say you fall behind if if you're not trying. If you procrastinate, um, I mean everyone procrastinates, including myself. So. As long as you stay on top of your work, you'll be fine. Yeah. Wouldn't it be you guys, huh? No. Nope. 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 <laughs> I guess not. No. Oh, walk <laughs> me through like a day in the life of you. I'm talking like wake up, you've got to go classes, you got practice. What's going on between? Well, for right now in the fall, we have to wake up at uh, five in the morning. I wake up at five. Yeah, five in the morning. Um, get up, uh, get dressed, brush my teeth. Um, get something in my system because when we have weights at six in the morning yeah and then from there uh we come back come back to the dorm uh shower up clean up and then you actually get a real breakfast in like eggs and stuff like mm-hmm. that that's what i cook eggs and then a little bit of sausage or something like that um and then we go to classes and then from classes uh we come back chill out for a little bit then we go back to the field um we will be there for a couple hours um and then right after that that's when you uh go to the dinner um, get your dinner and then uh, get your homework done, and that's the time you have to get your home, uh, homework done. Um, not not much time to socialize with people, yeah, but uh, okay. I think the socializing we do. Fit it in a little bit. I mean, we do it with uh, each other, like when yeah. we're on the field. I think that's when we most of the time we take our social uh, lives. Um, but for the most part, we're either getting doing homework, working out, or at the baseball field. So. So what's bedtime? Is it early? For me right now, it's ten. Okay. I, tr- I try to get a bed early, somewhat yeah. early, just so I can get my rest and get everything done with. So, yeah. Anthony, walk us through like a game day, day in your life. Okay, so Friday night, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, what? They're different. Hmm. Which ones? Let's do Friday, so we have some classes involved. Okay, so wake up. What uh, time? Hmm, 
last year I had 8 a.m. so I would wake up at like 7 o'clock, okay. get some breakfast in, go to my classes till I would say noon probably, and then I would grab lunch, then go to the field and just be there until the game starts. And okay, then, we're just chilling? Yeah, I'd be there, stretch out, get ready for the game, get mentally ready, uh-huh. go over my game plan. Um, usually like a I, playlist? Yes, I have a playlist. Can you uh, give me like top three songs on there? Off the top of your head, it's um, on the spot. I'll just say I like listening to Gunna before the game. Okay. Um, yeah. Good G- choice. Gunna, I love Gunna. Good choice. Yeah. And game days, usually I spend most of the time at the field. I don't like sitting around because that just takes my mind off yeah. of like the upcoming game. So I'm a pretty simple guy when it comes to game days. I like it. You want to give us yours? Is it a little different, or is it the same? No, it's probably the same. Um, I, well, I'm not listening to Gunna, that's for sure. I'm listening to The Game. Uh, it's an older uh, rapper. Okay. The Game or the Jock Dre. So that's why I'm okay. li- trying to get amped up for the game and trying to be motivated to play the yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. From a nutritional standpoint, do they, like, force you guys to eat certain things? I'm not saying force, but promote eating healthy. I mean, we talked to Mo Celsius. this milkshake right now, so I don't know how much they enforce this, but... <laughs> No, they do. Um, for the most part, we're all on a, on a, some sort of uh, weight program. Um, I know I'm on composition, so that means I kind of got to lose weight, um, which sucks because I like to eat. I love to eat. I love food. So, um, but besides that, I'm, I'm just trying to maintain my, my weight and trying to lose a little bit of body fat. Besides that, uh, they, try to, they try to promote it. They don't force it down our throats, but uh, I know they're promoting it yeah. to us and trying to take care of our health, our health first, no matter what. I mean, we have to take care of our bodies. We're always working out and uh, doing stuff with baseball. So, I mean, priority f- uh, your health is a priority, so. You got anything to add with that? I mean, I'm a weight gain guy. I don't. <laughs> That's why the milkshake's yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Milkshake. So, for me, it's just get, ca- get good calories in. I mean, yeah, I could sink a milkshake in there, too. But, um, yeah, my goal is to gain weight. I need to probably gain, like, 10 or 15 pounds by the season. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just eating anything in sight pretty much, as you can see, um, yeah. and I'm enjoying it. So. Enjoying it, too. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit about football. Not too much, but we are super excited for TCU Colorado this weekend. At Higginbotham, we put people first. So we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham, insurance, HR, and financial services, inspired by you. John's Grill is the newest venture from John Bennell and the Bennell's Restaurant Group. A reach to table concept featuring food, beer, and spirits from around the great state of Texas. Our menu is designed by Chef Sean Alvarez and features two chef-inspired burgers, the fatty and the flatty, plus a brisket menu perfect for your casual night out. Fast casual service in a fun, relaxed, family-friendly environment. Featuring 11 big screen TVs for you to catch the big game on. Our mixology team has created a craft cocktail and beer menu. Featuring local spirits and brews from across Texas. John's Grill, home of the Players Club show each week. 2905 West Berry Street in Fort Worth. Or online at johnsgrill.com. Welcome back to Players Club at John's Grill. We are so excited to be back here for our last segment. We're going to be talking a little bit of football. Going to go ahead and send it over to Courtney for this one. So we have a big game coming up on Saturday versus Colorado. Guys, let's have a little bit of a prediction time, okay? Lewis, can you start us off, please? I don't know, but I know that prime time is going down. Prime time's going down. 90 to 0, frogs by 90. <laughs> That's always a great answer. I love that one. And we've got a ton of stuff going on with this game, too. We've got a pregame show going on, but someone else does, too. We have Fox coverage covering the whole game, and then we're doing our pregame show on Frogs Today. Check it out, frogstoday.com. We air at 930, so make sure you check it out. Absolutely. You want to get there early, and you want to turn on your TVs. Watch it from your tailgate wherever you're pregaming the football game. And we have a lot of other sports going on this week. Soccer is playing tonight. Volleyball continues tonight and Saturday. And men and women's cross country also today. And then another soccer game 
on Sunday. So lots going on in the world of TCU athletics. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of fun. It went by super fast. So for all of us here at Frogs today, I'm Maggie Hale. I'm Courtney Stockhouse. Go Frogs. Go Frogs.